Okay, it's time to take a look at video and image filters. In this quick brief tutorial, we're going to be looking at the video filters that we can apply to still and moving images. These might change the color, the size, the crop, loads of different things about the image that you're looking at. So to start with, I have an image here. I have a source, which is an image of my dog, and I want to apply a filter to this image. From the previous tutorial, we know that to add a filter, we can right click and press filters. And then I'm going to press this plus button at the bottom here. And I'm going to add one of these filters to my image. Now, some of these are plugins, which we'll come to a little bit later on, uh, but we'll go through them one by one to figure out what each one does. 3D Transform. This is a plugin. I'll tell you more about this in the advanced tutorials later in the course. Apply LUT. Now, an LUT is basically a color map. Uh, think about Snapchat or Photoshop. Maybe you want to apply a sepia filter or a desaturated filter to your image. That's exactly what you can do with an LUT. Sure, there are other ways that you might be able to do this in the program, the easier ways, but an LUT means if I apply that LUT to every image, image on my stream, they are all going to have the same color map. And so all I have to do is press browse, choose one of these LUTs here, one of these filters. I'm going to choose posterize and you see it's posterized my image. I can set the scale of the posterization. I'm going to keep it a one just for dramatic effect and I'm going to press close and the filter is still applied. So that's LUTs. Let's go into our filters again and I'm going to hide every filter that I make. I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to hide it by clicking this I button. So you see if I hide it, the filter goes off. If I unhide it, it comes back on. Simple. On to the next filter, which is blur. Self-explanatory. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to increase the blur and decrease the blur just by moving this scale right here. I can also change the type of blur to Gaussian, box linear, dual filtering. But to be honest, you'll very rarely need something different to box blur. Let's hide that. On to the next filter, which is Chroma Key. Now, this is a extremely complicated filter which applies to green screens. Basically, what it does is it removes all green from your image on screen. We'll go into this in a little bit more detail down the line. But for now, let me just show you a quick example. I'm actually going to uh, add another image. Oh, I don't want to remove that. My bad. I'm going to add another image source. And we're going to find an image that has a little bit of green in it. Let's go to pictures. And let's go to this right here that I was working on for a company. So you can see in this picture, we've got some green at the bottom of the screen. Now, if I go to filters and I add a chroma key filter, you can see that it's actually started to remove that green from the image. And I can slide this scale, the similarity scale up and down to remove more green or less green. Again, quite a complicated process. We will come onto this later in the course because it is a very, very handy feature. Gonna remove that image and go back to our, go back to the picture of my doggy. Oh. Okay, on to the next filter, which is color grading. Color grading, again, another way of choosing the amount of spectrum of a color that you want in your image. If I want to reduce the amount of red in my image, I can reduce the red value. If I want to reduce the amount of green, I can reduce the green value. This is very good if you need to match your image color spectrum to an image that you already have. So let's say you have a, uh, I don't know, a picture of a house on fire. So it's a very warm, it's a very hot image. You might want to lift your red up a little bit to match that color map. It's another way of changing the color grading, the color mapping on your image. Quite useful. On to the next one, we have color correction. This is one of the most used filters on images and videos in OBS Studio. Um, we can change the gamma, which is basically a form of brightness, the contrast. Uh, we can change saturation. So do we want more color? Do we want less color in our image? You can see, so earlier we had uh, the, applying the LUT of grayscale or desaturation. You can actually do it in this filter as well by reducing the saturation all the way. Maybe you want to change the colors of your image completely by changing the hue. I can make my dog purple. I can make my dog blue, green, whatever we want by changing that hue shift. And you can also in here, one of the most important tools, you can also in here uh, change the opacity of your image. So how much transparency there is in your image. People forget that that's in this menu, but it is a very handy tool. 
Okay, on to the next one, which is color key. Uh, this is very, very similar to chroma key. It's not as optimized to the color green as you might think. Uh, let's have a look. What have we got here? Custom color. If I map this to, let's say, brown. Where is brown? We'll go with this brown here. It will start to remove the brown from my image. Do you see that? It's very similar to chroma key, but just not as accurate. So I'd always recommend using chroma key instead of color key. The next filter is crop pad. Cropping is probably something you've done before, but to put it in layman's terms, it's moving the sides and the tops of your image to make the image uh, smaller. You're not actually making the entire image smaller, you're basically cutting out sides and tops. So if I add 100 pixels to the top, it's going to remove some of the top. Let's make it a little bit more dramatic. Let's do 500 to the top. There you go. You can see it's cut the top of the image. If I do 500 to the right, it's going to remove... Oh, that's actually a really nice crop. It removes all of that pavement. I, I might keep that on, actually. 480. Let's put that on 480. Absolutely beautiful. And suddenly, you've got a much better looking image. Ta-da! Right-click, transform, center to the screen. So cropping is where you uh, change the boundaries of your image, basically. All right, well, we're going to leave that one on because it looks decent. Let's go filters. Let's go plus. What else have we got here? We've got dynamic mask. A little bit complicated, this filter. Uh, but basically, you are using a mask to change the data of your image. We'll come on to masks at a later date. They're a little bit complicated to explain and probably not something you need to know in the basics of this program. On to the next one, which is Image Mask. Again, we'll come on to Image Mask a little bit later. Very similar to Dynamic Mask. Uh, but basically, if I had a PNG of a circle and I wanted to crop the dog picture to a circle, I'd use an Image Mask. We'll come on to it a little bit later and uh, explain it in more depth. Luma Key is another form of color correction on your image, uh, but you're also removing the light. So if you have very, very light areas of your image, it will remove those bright white light areas. Not something that people tend to use so often, uh, but we will be going into this in more detail later on in the course as well. Move source is uh, obviously you, you're moving your sources around, but you need to have scenes and groups set up. Another feature which not many people use and we will talk about at a later date. Move value is similar to move source, move transition override. This is a plugin, which we won't look at just yet. Render delay. Now, render delay is interesting. If you want to delay the, the, uh, the stream of your video file with images, it's not going to work. If you want to delay your video file start time, you can add delay to the start of your video file by changing this value. So I can change it to a second, two seconds, 100 milliseconds, anything I want. This is very helpful for stream intros and stream outros. I'm sure we'll be using this in a later course. Let's uh, hide all of these, shall we? Except for crop, of course. Uh, we're going to add SDF effects later on. That's a plugin. Scaling aspect ratio. This is basically changing the size and ratio, aspect ratio of your image. So it will stretch and thin your image depending on the aspect ratio that you decide. To be honest, this is helpful if you have like a flat color or a base color background to your screen. But if you have an image, a very specific image like the one I have, it's just going to distort the image. So for now, I'd be leaving the scaling and aspect ratio alone. Uh, scroll. Here's a very, very handy uh, filter for you. And for this one, I'm actually going to add a new source. I'm going to add a new text source. And we're going to say, uh, my dog is great. And we're going to make it a little bit smaller so it fits on screen. And we're going to put it right in the middle here. Let's transform and center horizontally. Oh, let's just center to screen. Why don't we do that? And I'm going to add the scroll filter to this text. What it's going to do is it's going to make the text move across the screen and repeat itself. It can move vertically, horizontally, or both. Sounds complicated, but it's really not. Let me show you it in live time. I'm going to add the scroll and I'm going to change. Let me make this window a little smaller so we can see everything. I'm going to put the horizontal speed up a little bit and you'll see the text scrolling along the screen. 
it's not optimized and the letters are a little bit squished together. We can change that at a later date, but it's really handy for information, for tickers, for subscri subscribers, like most recent subscribers, most recent donators. If you have it scrolling, you can have more information than having just, you know, one person on screen. You could actually have 10 if it's scrolling across. Let's uh, put the horizontal speed back to zero and show you what it does vertically. It works within the scale of its image size, its canvas size. So at the moment, it's not scrolling all the way to the top of the screen. We'll talk more about scrolling at a later date, but just so you know, this is here. It's a fantastic, fantastic feature. Uh, one that you'll see on many people's streams. Let's get rid of that text. We don't need that anymore. We have, what else do we have? What else do we have? I keep adding source instead of a filter. Let's go down to shader. Shader, as it says in the name, you're going to need a shader file. And basically what that's going to do is apply shade and color mapping to your image. For now, not something you need to know. For later, we will definitely go into it in more detail. And what do we have finally? Finally, we have sharpen, which is going to sharpen up your image. If you have a slightly pixelated or blurred image, sharpen might help you just get that little bit of crispness into your image. As it happens, my image is pretty clear and good, good quality already. If I sharpen, it's just going to make it look a little bit distorted and fuzzy. Uh, if I unsharpen or if I desharpen, I mean, you can't go any lower than zero, so it doesn't help you blur. The opposite of sharpen being blur and the opposite of blurring being sharpen. So if you need to do either of those, you've got both options there for yourself. And that very basically covers uh, all of the video and image filters on OBS Studio. There are many more which I'm going to be introducing you to later in the course, but those are thanks to plugins. And they're very, very helpful, create some incredible techniques. For now, just get an image source or a video source into OBS Studio. Have a play around with each of these filters. You are not going to destroy your OBS Studio by playing with filters. And if you add a filter to your source and you're not happy with the results, just go ahead and remove it. We can remove these just by clicking onto them and pressing the negative, the minus button at the bottom here. Let me turn all of these on. So we've got some really weird stuff going on here. Let me turn that shader off. If I just want to remove them all, I can literally just keep pressing negative. Or if you want to hide them and keep them for a later date, just click that I button. It will hide them and keep them in the list. I'm going to go ahead and remove them and you'll see the image reverts back to our original picture of the dog. Let's take them all off. Take them all off one by one. Uh, can I press press delete here? I can. There you go. You can also just press delete. I did not know that. <laughs> delete is a hotkey for removal of mask. There we go, guys. Back to our original image. That's image and video filters. Stay tuned for more top tips and tricks for those video and image filters.